Hey, what's going on? It is the Man Fuse Podcast. I am Kay Lee, audio producer, voice artist, Ben H., my co-host, real estate mogul, entrepreneur. What's happening? Crooner. Yeah. Sports car driver. Soon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hey, if you guys have any uh, thoughts, opinions on the show, you want to join the show, if you have any funny videos you want to submit, just go to manfuse.com. If you learn something, if it's funny, if you laugh, share it with a friend, share it with your mom. Absolutely. Share it with your significant other. Oh, yeah. It'll bring you closer together. Or not. Or farther (laughs) apart, you know. Okay, your taste is obviously completely different than mine. It'd be a shame, wouldn't it? Maybe it would save uh, somebody's future. Like, and you know, they don't waste their time. It's true. So today on the Man Fuse podcast, Russia is saying they're losing because Ukraine has experimental mutant troops created in secret bio labs. Also, PhD students being told to consider selling Avon products to make ends meet. I have some beef with Ben over a cruel prank he played on me. And we're going to close out today's show with the Jenga metaphor. I don't know if you heard, but I saw this on Reddit. It said Russia was losing to Ukraine because they have experimental mutant troops created in secret bio labs. Yeah, this is interesting because we have bio labs there. And apparently what they're saying is that they have tested the blood of some dead Ukrainian soldiers and they have found pathogens and and live pathogens in their blood which would indicate that they've been genetically modified to be super soldiers <laughs> now i revert back to our proposition which i think should have happened a long time ago if general milley would have heard our show and heard our suggestion about what to do i think this conflict would be over are you talking about our lgbtq named yes yeah, and some weapons? gay bombs over there to yeah. demoralize them yeah. to the extent that they'll just Ukrainian thundercock yeah. is, is rearing its head again <laughs> so but no it's a serious thing and i mean you know this is something that's been going on for a long time so it, it could be true but yeah russia's definitely getting their ass kicked now whether they're super mutant soldiers or not There's certainly a difference when you're defending your homeland versus when you're invading someone else's homeland. Oh, yeah. I I mean, mean, that in and of itself puts you in a super soldier. You have something to fight and die for. I I mean, mean, like, you are are prepared. Where Russian troops, you know, they're fighting for their country because they're ordered to. Correct. These people are fighting. They really just want to make it home. Yeah, at the end of the day. I mean, and they don't want to be killed by their Russian leaders for being a traitor. That's right. Exactly. So they're like, uh, we're here because we're supposed to be here. It's like Leonidas said in the movie 300. You see, old friend, I brought more soldiers than you did. My 300. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. And that was, uh, I forget the guy's name, but he was, you know, they were coming to join him and they had a blacksmith right. and a farmer a, and, a, you know. And yeah, and a cow milker yeah. and a... <laughs> Russian, you know, I'm sure they're giving them amphetamines. I'm sure they're fucking, they're starving them because they don't have all the food. Like, they're not eating, like, high on the hog. Dude, did you hear about this Ukrainian guy killed this Russian soldier and then took his cell phone and called his wife? And he was like, yeah, this isn't your husband. I just killed your husband. He's laying here dead in front of me. Just wanted to call and let you know. Woo. Well, you know what? That might have been a kind gesture because maybe Russia would have never even told the wife what happened to the yeah, soldier. you never know. I have a feeling they're not probably admitting a whole bunch. They're like, well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's a, it's a really interesting conflict, and it's unfortunate. I mean, so far, the uh, Democrat-led House Senate presidency has sent $69 billion with a B, dollars to Ukraine. And at the end of the day, dude, this is all about the skim. I mean, hey, I'll tell you what, Zelensky, I'll send you 69 B, but we got to find some way to get half of that back in our own pockets. And guess what? It's coming right out of your pocket, right out of my pocket. It's taxpayer money. It's coming out of the pensions that are... All the money we're giving to Ukraine. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's you, you pay taxes. It goes to Ukraine so that ultimately the people in charge of sending the money can skim it back to themselves tax free. The hustle. 
Another article I saw, I've always felt this way. I'm not a college graduate. I'm not even a high school graduate. I'm a high school dropout with a good enough diploma, a GED. There you go. I got my $500 gift certificate to the community college of my choice. There you yeah, go. I mean, if I was accepted, which I didn't fucking use. And I've always felt that, to me, unless you're going to be a doctor, yeah. where obviously you need a superior amount yeah. of training. Right. I always felt in my heart of hearts and through the business books I've read and through the mindset I've always had that going to school to get a good education, to get a job, to work for somebody is like getting a one way ticket to an island where everyone's trying to get the fuck off. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that whatsoever. And I will say that even though someone like yourself may not have a high level of education from the perspective of the piece of paper that you hold or what you did when you were 17. I, you're a very learned person. You know, I mean, you're a really smart guy. And I know a lot of other people who are very successful like you are in multiple different facets of life. Like myself, I mean, I, I don't have a college degree. No. Um, you know. And right, but you got, you went. I, I grind, mean, dude. Yeah, you I grind. I freaking hustle. Well, you have street smart, which I think is huge. Yeah. Street smarts is, you know, gives you I a went way. to the army instead of going to college. Right. And I think, you know, but being street smart and book smart, if I had to choose one, I'll take the streets over book every well, day. Well, you of own, week. you started a tattoo piercing parlor and got a big piece of that and you're owner of, you're an entrepreneur. And I got my real estate license and I got my broker's license. Yeah. But but still, but like you're working for yourself, yes. you know, you're hustling and you're grinding. Yes. But like these people that are going to get PhDs, they are literally going to get a job at a lab and, yeah. you know, they're working, you know, for some big entity. Right. Where, I mean, they're just a fucking blip. So the article was that um, it said PhD students were told to consider selling Avon products to make ends meet. Yeah. And it just went on to say that even these people who get their PhDs just end up getting fucked up. Even some of these people that are making, I mean, it was saying here that, uh, that I mean, you could make a hundred grand, but then by the time you're done paying off the school yeah. and the amount you're working, you're barely making ends meet. Look, man, I, you know, I've got uh, a, a buddy of mine who's a doctor. The insurance for, to be a doctor yeah. or a dentist yeah. is in. He doesn't take insurance. No, I'm saying, but, but they don't you take... have to be insured. What they have to pay in case they fuck someone up yeah, dude. is insane. But along those same lines, he does not take insurance. We'll take your card. You cannot run your insurance. We'll give you the invoice and you can send it to your in insurance if you want, but they don't work through insurance. And, you know, for him to go and be a doctor somewhere, he could make, you know, whatever, 150 grand, 200 grand, something like that, maybe more depending on what kind of profession you're in. Well, instead of doing that, he's decided to take the hustle route, the grind route, and he's now an owner of multiple franchises that they're expanding. And it all comes down to sales, man. I talk about this often. Every aspect of business literally comes down to sales. It always does. Whatever function is causing the sales to occur, whatever is the lead generation source of that business that takes it from open to close, that's the highest valued position in the world. That is the highest paying job on the planet is the development of the business. I don't care. You could take NFL football. You could go uh, doctor. You could go grocery store. All Any job you can think of, the lion's share of the income is coming from the procurer of the sales the business whether it's the product or the service and so these guys go and get a phd go work for someone else who procures business that you can work on right right and you can get a little piece of right, that right but you you're basically handling all the back end shit yeah because they've already they've got the business coming in the funnel yeah you get a phd in what psychology so you're either going to have your own practice or you're going to go work for someone else's practice you've got to generate a book of business just That's like true. anybody else. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You go get a job at a lab. Well, who's generating the business? Well, the lab is. 
Well, how are they doing that? Well, somebody is making a connection with the person in charge at the hospital and securing a contract for their lab. Or and marketing that, or just whatever they're and doing. that's the guy that's getting paid the money. Right. The yeah. guy that's working on the, the you know, whatever it is, is, you know, I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe they get paid 80, 100 Gs a year. It's fine. It's not bad money, but yeah. I, I'm with you, man. I mean, what do you think? I mean, as far as your kids in education, because I don't disagree, but at the same time, I know great attorneys. I know great doctors. Well, if you're an attorney, you've got I know really know the smart law. people. Hell yeah. That just love school. I mean, I've known people who are so smart that they should be in school. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Well, and they love it. I, I'm going to just throw a number out. 75% of people that go to school, they have an idea of what they want to do. Yeah. They achieve what they want to do, and then they right. find out, this isn't what I want to do. Right. Or they're having trouble getting, you know, placed or hired. I've always tried to have mentors. If I'm looking at something, I'm going to go talk to somebody who is at the top of their game and what they do in that area, yeah. and I'm going to find out if they're fucking happy. Yeah. Because a lot of times, you get to a place, and you know, and some of these fucking guys, like some dentists, I mean, like... I've known some dentists that are like, this shit sucks. Yeah. They Imagine fucking hate it. Imagine looking making... throat all day, dude. Well, besides that, it's the, the insurance that they have to pay. Yeah. And they're, they're bleeding them dry. Yeah. You know, um, it's not sustainable. That's right. It's not sustaining their happiness. That's right. In, in, you know, yeah, you're helping some fucking rotten tooth motherfucker have a nice grill. It's not what they thought it was going to be 10, 12 hours a day, every yeah. day, you know, appointment after appointment after whiny fucking Absolutely. customer. And how do you develop the business? Well, you got to rent a space. You got to have a sign. You've got to have fucking That's medical number staff one and if two. you're a fucking dentist. Yeah. You know, I mean, you got to be the dentist. You got to have, you know, people got to be able to see you. People know you. Small town dentists do pretty well because everybody knows who they are and you can do father, son, you know, and it can go throughout the family. But I'll tell you this. But it's not passive income. It requires their ass to be there unless they have a few dentists working under their practice. If I had to do it all over again. Please tell us, Ben. There are two separate avenues other than the one I took that I could have gone on and both would have required me to be a very, very good student. Obviously, I didn't take that route, and I'm fine with that. But you are a student of your own. Yes. I mean, in of your school, own, I would have had to make really good grades. Of your own pursuit. What would you have been? So, in, in one hand, after my military experience. An attorney. I No, after my military experience, I thought, I would fucking fly fighter jets. Oh, God, Top yeah. Gun, oh, Maverick, oh, Tom Cruise. That's one of my fucking. Fucking just blasting off of uh aircraft carriers i'm blasting in my pants oh, right now yeah. it's like Going one of my dreams 800 miles an hour hair on fire banging hot girls i mean dude i mean the fighter pilots are the coolest motherfuckers on the planet dude. mock to oh, just dude. fucking yeah. yeah but like that is like the percentage of those yeah. who become that are, well that's what i'm saying yeah. but i could have done it you i mean i could have done why it. didn't you what stopped you i didn't want it Oh. I, I didn't know. I mean, I just didn't, I didn't have that clarity. Were you just like, when you had a chance to get out of the army, were you like, I'm getting fucking out of the army? Well, I had to get out of the army. I was in a bad car accident. I wasn't going to get out. It was a car accident that I was in. I was going to special operations, but I got into a bad car accident and it crushed my leg. Uh, and, uh, and so I couldn't continue in combat arms. Uh, um, but would that have held, kept you from doing pilot? I guess yes. you still have to be yes. in. You got to be perfect. Can't have an old, uh, old <laughs> rusty have, knee. No, no, you can't have none of that. And then the other avenue uh, I would have taken is I would have studied the arts and I would have gone to college in Europe. When I lived in Europe, when I was in the military, I joined the army because they were the only one to send me to Germany. And when I lived there, I met a lot of students who were my age because I was in my early 20s. So a lot of the girls and the guys that I became friends with just in the towns were students. This is just such an incredible way to do college. And I actually went to Rome about five or six years ago, and it struck me. When I was in Rome, I said, I wish my parents would have showed me this around my middle school age, because I bet I would have just zeroed in on doing anything possible to go to school there. Going to school in Rome would be one of the coolest fucking things that a human being could do. Oh yeah, I bet. It is just sick there. 
and to go to so the beautiful women and unbelievable food. Mm. A lot of places you go and you got to like, you know, they have like everything's roped off and these old ancient sites and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Dude, in Rome, you're in that shit. You walk in the You're Coliseum. walking around in it. Yeah. It's insane. It's yeah, crazy. I haven't been to Rome and I really would. So definitely. those are two reasons why I would have, could have, should have. So you would have gone to school in Rome just to go to school in Rome. I would have done whatever it took to go to school in Rome. I would have set my course in ninth grade on what school I was going to go to, what area of study. But what would you have studied? Whatever the hell it was. Okay. I, I think the arts, maybe. I okay. mean, maybe something, you know, artistic, maybe maybe international business, maybe yeah. maybe Italian-American affairs. Maybe I would have learned Italian, and that could have been my major, would be the, the Italian language. Ooh. You know, I mean, seriously, yeah. like, if you went there in ninth grade and you were like, yeah. Oh, oh, I, I need to learn this. I want to go to school here. Then you could literally learn Italian and you could study Italian right. in Rome. Which, yeah. Which get, would just be fucking. Well, you'd be able to use it like oh, all the God. time. It'd just be so here sick. Here in the States, you go talk in Italian. People are like, you fucking speak That's English, right. please. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I think I've become so far everything that i've wanted to be i mean yes. i'm never stagnant <laughs> yes this is my life yes he has <laughs> but no you've I mean, landed like, but like anything that i've set out to do i've done yeah you know i'm in what i'm doing now because that's you know i one day decided yeah i'm gonna go do this and like people are like oh and the haters come out and they're like no why are you gonna do that and right. I'm like, because i'm gonna fucking do it and yeah. i did it um you know you gotta pay your dues and you gotta yeah. do that but just like you, I'm constantly sharpening myself, whether yes. it be books or whatever, learning, learning from people who are who are where you want to be yeah. in that particular category, because yeah. not everybody is perfect. No one's perfect. And just because someone, you know, is inspiring to you in business, yeah. their personal life might be a fucking train wreck and True. you might not want to emulate them in the, on a personal level with their kids and their wife and, yeah. you know... Um, balance family balance is seldom the case with people who are really successful in business it's really hard they typically don't have family life balance at all it's really hard yeah you you, you can't do it requires too much time and too much well, focus you just need to i mean let, let's just be real you're not going to be there for every one of your kids moments no there's going to be shit that you're gonna miss yes because guess what you have a life too yes now you want to be there for them, and you will be there for them. Just because you missed Jack's, you know, so and so, it doesn't mean Jack's going to grow up right. and hate you because of it. But there's that extreme where if you're like missing everything, yeah. and it's always like you're never where's there. Dad, yeah. you know, Dad's never or here. Dad said he was going to be at my baseball game, and then you don't and show he never up. Never comes to my baseball games, but he says he's going to be at every single one of them. Right, and he's always got an excuse. And it's always an excuse, well, and I'll th- make it up to you. Then you are going to then you're going to hurt your kid or your wife. And I guess you got to find a partner that will support you. And- well, a lot of people get divorced over that shit, man. Lose your health as well. I mean, I've gone through it big time over the last 10 years, dude. With my health, struggling with my weight. Before I really got into business big time, I had a, a much more defined control over my emotions as it related to food. Whereas when I got deeper into the business... Um, the stress and the pressure, it caused me to overcompensate or lose control of my emotions as it pertains to food. I'm compensating for a uh, celebration with food or compensating for this. Celebration with drinks. Yeah, or you, you have a great day, drinks. you want a steak and a whiskey. You have a bad day, you want a steak and a whiskey. You know what I mean? And, That's right. And you're always under this, and this pressure queen. and you're under the gun. And Dairy Queen or Dairy Culver's. Queen. Culver's like my neighbor. Dude, <laughs> the other day, I had a fat boy moment. Uh, it was it was so fat. Fat. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, was the fattest of the fat boy moments. It was a morbidly obese moment. Yeah. Tell me about your moment. Well, Admit it here on our, Man Fuse. We're going to do a deal with Culver's now because this is the second time. Okay. And I've even got people telling me, hey, because of your podcast, I go to Culver's. So anyway, I happen to be driving by Culver's. Right. Decided to swing in to see what all the hype was about. So you've never been to a Culver's? Never been to a Culver's. Ooh. So I got a concrete oh, okay. vanilla with Reese's. Were you impressed by the large amount of 
options that you were presenting. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah, and it's yeah, a I didn't fucking know what shitload. To do. So I just went for the concrete. Dude, the anyway. butter burgers are really fucking good. Is it? Ooh, yeah. The butter burger. Yeah, it's a butter burger. So anyway, I order this vanilla with Reese's, and I, as I'm eating it, I'm not thinking, and it was good. It was very good, but that's not what I was thinking about. You know what I was thinking about? I wonder how this compares with Dairy Queen's Blizzard. <laughs> oh. So, so you know what I did? You squealed out. I drove straight to Dairy Queen. Did you have while side I was by eating. side? No, no. I ate the Culvers oh, on the way you to have Dairy had, Queen. You should have videoed <laughs> and done a a post. We should. You should have yeah, done the side do by it. side comparison. We're gonna do it. And and so, what was your what was your thoughts? Dairy Queen all day. Really? Not even close. Dairy Queen all day. Uh, not even close. Well, but you had the concrete, I think. Which is comparable to a blizzard. Correct. I mean, that's, But I think you if know. you went with a different item, I think. What is Culver's, the item that you would choose I mean, God, for there's me to so go much, with. dude. I mean, I mean I'm so just talking, much. I go to Dairy Queen, I like the blizzards. That's, like the blizzards. that's all I'm saying. You like them to turn it up, turn yeah, it back. Yeah, yeah, I like the blizzard. I get the small one because I don't have to feel like such an asshole. To myself. But that day you felt like a giant gaping asshole. I just wanted to destroy it. Did you tell your wife of this sin? Yes. You did? Ma no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hungry, babe. I, I had a light lunch. <laughs> I did not tell her of this discrepancy, this little private moment oh, that the, I had. The blizzard is so good, dude. It is good. Did it's you so get a small blizzard? Yes. And did, what did you get there? I got uh, I got the chocolate blizzard Ooh. with Reese's. Oh, nice. So I want to move on. I mean, we could spend fuckload amount of time talking about ice cream, ice cream and business <laughs> and and how those two go hand in hand. Yeah. I have a little beef with you, Ben. Oh, I was thinking. Yeah, you did something to me on Friday. <laughs> Yes. That I tried to do was something cruel. with you. It but was cruel. You were unavailable to do it with me. It was me. cruel. <laughs> it was a cruel something. Yeah. And not only was it a lie, <laughs> but you let me go the entire weekend believing uh, something was so. I'm a horrible friend. So I ask our audience what is the worst prank yeah. anybody has ever played on you? Right. Please, if you have one, if you know of somebody where maybe you've done it to somebody else, hit us up at manfuse.com because I think Ben, yeah, he hurt me. Yes. So this is the scene. Friday, I wasn't thinking about it, but my wife was over at your house for yeah. a brief moment. Yes. And my wife leaves, handles stuff with your wife, they yeah. do whatever they do, and my wife comes home. Correct. And I never thought anything about it. I get a phone call from Ben. I well, see I we see. learned that she was gonna be out of town for a day or something like that. Correct. My wife was leaving and town. That's what prompted me. Okay, so my wife was leaving town um on Saturday. Yes. For about twenty four hours. Yes. So I get a call from Ben H, and I'm not putting, connecting the dots. I see Ben's calling. I'm like, what up, bro? Yeah. How are you? He's like, what's going on? He's like, hey, you know, one of my really wealthy clients just hit me up, and he's chartering a plane down to the Bahamas to look at this, like, multi-billion dollar property. Yes. And at first, I thought Ben was just calling to brag. And I'm like, well, that's great, Ben. That's fucking awesome. It sounds amazing. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, they're, I'm like, where are you staying? He's like, well, they're chartering a yacht. So we're going from the plane, this like G5. G5. Yeah, yeah. G5, sick ass plane, yeah. straight to the yacht. And we're going to be there for, it's going to be like two nights. Two nights, turn and burn. Yeah, we're just going to We be, have to be in the yacht so we can see the property from the ocean. Right. It's going to be bananas. It's going to be epic. I'm like, man, it sounds beautiful. He's like, there's an extra seat. He's like, but we're leaving in two hours. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> and in my mind. And I let it marinate. In my mind, I'm going. Okay, what do I got to do? What have I committed to do? How can I break it? What right. can I do? All right, I'm going to have to tell my wife. She can't go she out of town go now. Alabama. She's going to have to sacrifice her personal time, right. her alone time, which she so deserves, Yes. while I have the opportunity to ride on a G5 and yeah. stay on a yacht. Right. And Ben's like, oh, and you got to bring a few collared shirts, <laughs> which I have, but if you see me on a typical day, 
I'm not normally wearing no. a collared shirt. Now I can pull one off, definitely, wonderfully. But He's that's a handsome not my man. that's not my go to. It's not that's not what I would go to. But right. being around, you know, um, somebody that was so wealthy, if I had to dress a little, you know, if I had to, if I had to wear collared Just shirts, a golf shirt, some pink know, fucking short shorts yeah, with exactly. some with some loafers with no exactly. socks, then I'll fucking do it. I'll, I'll it. fucking wax my legs. That's and it. I'll get out there. <laughs> So I'm like, dude. We had so much fun. I'm like, it was amazing. Fuck you, Ben. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I can't. I can't. I'm like, I'm committed. I'm committed to going to this thing because I was actually going to this live podcast um, with one of my colleagues who was doing it, whose podcast has been uh, for about two years longer than ours. Mm. And, you know, so obviously they have a bigger following. Yeah. Um, but I was doing research for yes. us yes. to see how they handled it, how it was yes. managed, how right. it went. And I'm like, okay, I committed to go to that, which I could cancel. You're like, man, well, I'll be back uh, like late Sunday. Have a nice weekend. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> thanks, Ben. You have a great time. So my wife comes home. Now, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I have two hours to make something happen. Right. So my brain starts working. My wife, she's like, who is that? And I was like, oh, it was Ben. I was like, uh, babe, can we... Can we talk about something? And she's like, what? And I was like, was there any way that... Um, she probably thought you were trying to get some. No. Is, you would forego your going out of town this weekend um, so I can hop on a G5 plane, which is kind of, at this point in my life, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Yes. Never been on one. Never stayed on a big yacht before either. Right. And I don't know how big the yacht was. And then you see that About look. About a hundred footer. Yeah. You see that look come over her face like, you have to be fucking kidding me. Yeah, because she's ready to go. Oh, yeah, dude. Her bags are basically packed. So that yeah. starts. It was her mom's birthday. Shut up, Ben. <laughs> so that starts a fight. That starts a fight. I get in a fight with my wife. A huge fight. A, a huge fight. And I'm like, and I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm Now I'm mad. And she has every right to be mad, but now I'm fucking mad yeah. because she doesn't see that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Or care. So what do I do? Yeah. I tuck my wiener in between my legs yeah. and I go pout. Yes. All right. And I'm in a bad mood. Yeah. And I'm thinking about it all day Saturday. <laughs> yeah. I could be in the fucking G5 down on a yacht in the yeah. Bahamas looking at with property. pink shorts. With pink shorts and my w legs waxed. And <laughs> yeah, that's me. Come back all tan like, what? Oh, yeah. So I'm mad. And she's fucking mad. Yeah. She goes out of town mad. Right. And I don't really have much to say to her. I mean, you can go do what you were going to do anytime. Shit, yeah. I'll give you two days. I'll That's give you right. three days. Yes. She wasn't having it. I tried to bargain. I tried to negotiate. Right. It wasn't happening. So finally, I, I couldn't be mad any longer. All right, babe, I support you in what you do. Yeah. But I'm probably going to pout. You just accepted the fact that this right. was just yep. mm -hmm. called in too late. Right. And then I come to find out, Ben. Yeah. On Sunday morning, I see a post from your wife. Yeah. That you have company in town. <laughs> and there you are. Blowing up a fucking slip and slide yeah. in your yard as your kids are running down it. Yeah. I haven't called you because I don't want you to tell me how great yeah. of a fucking time you're just imagining you're me on planes and yachts. That just was a ball cool... out of control. Did you ever think, were you, did you mean, like, were you going to be like an hour later, be like, no. hey, I'm just joking? Or did you just forget about the whole fact that you just fucking told me that? I, so actually, I, I actually wrote a text. After we hung up, and I said, just fucking with you. And you never sent it. And I forgot to send it. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking dick. <laughs> you dick. Now, that was a pretty damn good prank. Now, it wasn't, I don't, I mean, it, it, at first it was intentional. You yes. were fucking with me. Yes. Because you had information. You knew my wife was going yes. out. The fact that you didn't. And I had my wife on speaker. And the fact that you didn't let me know. <laughs> I was like, watch this. I'm going to fuck with her. <laughs> right. <laughs> you didn't bother to tell me. I hadn't talked to you all week, the rest of the weekend because you know, guess what? Thought you were yeah, gone. Balling. Yeah. You're a dick. Balling. You are a dick. It was, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a good trip. <laughs> we had to come back early. 
Um, <laughs> You're a fucking dick. <laughs> We're going to wrap up this week's podcast, but I want to end it on this uh, metaphor that Ooh. I saw. And it was really fucking good. And I think it has to do with life. It has mm. to do with everything. Yeah. Now, Ben, have you ever played the game of Jenga? Uh, I'm not great at it, but I have played before. Okay, so for those of you who are unfamiliar with the infamous board game, the game is first set up by its participants who stack these wooden blocks together in one direction. Then three more blocks are placed on the top of them, perpendicular to the blocks underneath. It's so like the- a wooden skyscraper. Correct. Yes. And now they have giant Jenga sets yes. and they have, you know, normal Jenga sets. So the pattern resumes until a 54 block tower is ultimately formed. And when the game begins, each person takes a turn removing one of the blocks mm. not located on the top three levels and places it on top of the tower mm. without knocking it down, thus building the tower higher and higher and fucking up its structure yes it's it's base until it falls until it falls it seems easy the problem is that each person takes their turn the base of the tower progressively becomes more unstable the base of the tower struggles to support its heavy top until eventually it collapses signaling the conclusion of the game with the loser being the participant who pulled the block that caused it to fall yes On a broad scale, we build relationships, building many things, um, careers, lives, that we hope we can look back on with fondness when we approach the end, right? However, deeper than relationships, careers, or even lives, we build companies, services, projects, cases, homes, friendships, families, all those things. However, instead of using blocks, we make up our lives using choices. Yes. And these choices can accumulate for decades. Mm. Just as the Jenga participant must decide which block to remove, we too must decide which decision will get us to where we want to go next. Mm -hmm. However, in order to build something great, risks must be taken. Yes. Even in removing the loosest block from the tower, there's still the risk that an unsteady hand or some other force of nature will knock it the fuck down. Mm -hmm. Things don't always go according to plan. Yes. Sometimes a magnificent tower will be built, but eventually you'll run out of moves. Then you must decide either stay as you are or take a chance deciding to remove a block and risk the tower tumbling. Despite its simplicity, Jenga is a game that requires much thought. Life is the same way. Not only as the main characters of our own story, but also as supporting characters in the stories of others, we will be forced to make an abundance of choices. Mm -hmm. And the tower may fall. And when that happens, everyone will be forced to witness every choice made disappear into a single, possibly devastating result. And then, hopefully, you'll have the opportunity to build again. Mm. I just thought that that kind of describes life. Yeah, the greatest thing we have to risk, you know, is time. That's the biggest currency we've got. It's the only thing we've... Yeah. It's, and money yeah. is just a fucking object. Yeah, it's I mean, necessary. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's our time that is so important. So, yeah, I like that metaphor. I think it's great. Well, Ben, I am wise beyond my years. And, Obviously. And my metaphors go on. Like I never eternity. thought of Jenga like life. Now, but now I see it. Next time you play Jenga and you pull that block. I like... Punching the blocks on my finger. Oh, yeah. I like to watch yeah, them right? fly out. Yeah, yeah. And even if you Whoops! fuck that up. <laughs> like Bruce Lee. <laughs> and dude, even if you fuck it up, it's still awesome because the thing just scat- it just blows up. Just like each move just represents a choice, you yes. know? And shit, sometimes your choices lead to great results and sometimes they lead to failures. And, you know, ultimately, as long as you're alive, you'll get to build again. So I had a conversation with a friend of mine who over the last two years... This was a pretty successful guy, but over the last two years, he took a company public. He rolled up other companies in his industry, and he raised $300 million and took his company public. And I get to talk to him every two or three months. He lives in a hotel in Miami, in a penthouse, suite. He said, you know, it's unbelievable. He said, but, you know, the interesting thing is now that I have shareholders— I work harder than I've ever worked in my whole life. Because you got to please those shareholders. He said, I'm working 12, 15 hours a day. And he said, I tell you what, Ben, most people don't realize it. All the way up to the top level, 
all the way at the highest possible level, success is actually more about failure oh, yeah. than it is about success. Oh, yeah. I mean, he said, you know, I, no one knows how much I failed at trying to do this until I finally succeeded at it. You ain't going to get where you need to go without failing. Yeah. I mean, because you're not, per no one's perfect and you're figuring it out. I mean, it's just like, it's just like door knocking. Like when it, mm -hmm. when it comes to guerrilla marketing or picking up the phone and hustling, you know, you're going to get no's and those are small failures. Yeah. You're going to get no's, 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 and you might make even a bad decision here and there that's going to cause a deal to blow up or whatever, or you don't have the right pieces. Yeah. So you fail at it. But as long as you keep going. I would caveat the Jenga metaphor and say, obviously, you want to be as good at keeping the tower up as possible, yet at the same time, accepting that. It's going to fall and you're just going to have to rebuild it and continue to rebuild it and rebuild it and it's going to fall again and you got to rebuild it again and it's going to fall. You might try to do it a different way or whatever it is. And you're going to make different choices the next time. And you're going to make different choices the next time. Those might be the wrong choices too. But eventually, Mark Cuban said, you only have to really get it right one time. Yeah, that's good. He said, you can do all these things. It could take you all these years of failure, 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 failure. He said he sees it all the time. He said it's one of the most common things with the most successful people on the planet. It's like a principle. So my friend, what he told me, he said, do you know who hit the most home runs in uh, baseball history? Person that struck out the most? Babe Ruth. Right. Struck out. And Probably Babe more Ruth struck also out. had the, more strike the most strikeouts as well. In history. Right. Baseball still. Right. Still. Right. All these hundred years later or whatever it's been, still home runs and strikeouts. Well, yeah, because he's swinging for the fucking fences every time. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's I think it's hard from an ego perspective to admit failure, to do things that cause failure that, that you probably know you're going to fail at. You know, you are right. It's a fact. The success ratio is slim. And so, therefore, the amount of an activity that you have to do in this category is immense. <laughs> On the failed department. In, in the, the failed department. But when you succeed, it's worth it all. Right. Yeah. It, and you, you got to swallow need. your freaking nuts to do that kind of shit, man. Or someone else's. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe so. <laughs> I just want to win. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings up another point. <laughs> so... There's this guy okay. on the lake. He's got this beautiful Chris Craft. Chris Craft. 35 foot, the most beautiful dark blue with a red stripe and the beautiful polished wood. I mean, this thing is sick. And this guy's ripped. I mean, he's tan. <laughs> he's shredded. We're on my boat and we're passing this guy. And my wife almost jumped out of the boat. <laughs> I mean, and that doesn't happen very often, but she was she was stunned by this guy. I mean, she was like, wow, look at him. Now, Ben, look at like, wow. And she waved to him. She's like, hi. Uh, whoa. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, which she's not like that at all. Oh my God. And so, but honestly, I was like, <laughs> you're like, hey, I was yeah. like, what up? You know what I mean? So anyway, this handsome, this handsome. Sometimes you got to give him a pass. And this guy certainly, he was the pass. Okay. Okay. I mean, this guy was every How woman's nice was dream. His boat? his boat was dope. Oh, dude. I mean, we're talking about like a $400,000 Chris Crab. I mean, this is just freaking unbelievable. So that happened a couple months ago. Speaking of licking balls, we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're at this other restaurant, and I see the boat, and I look, honey, he's, he's here. here. <laughs> You're just as excited. Get your ass in the boat. Uh, <laughs> we're leaving. <laughs> we're leaving. No. So actually, there he was on his boat. He had a shirt on this time, but oh, it was him. Thank you, sir, for actually getting dressed. And he's just as much of a stud with a shirt on. And then Is his boyfriend young? rolled up. <laughs> It like smacked his ass. <laughs> it's a good game, baby. <laughs> what did you look oh. at? Did you did you start laughing? I looked at Jen and I just chuckled. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey! She was like, 
Uh, never mind. Now, that would have been funny if you would have been like, hey! What's up, boys? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Woo, party! <laughs> Honey, take the kids home. Yeah, yeah. I'll be home later. I'm going to ride on his Chris <laughs> i got to go take some risks. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny. That's a yeah. good story. Yeah. Well, um, I think we need to wrap up today. Um, this is the Man Fuse podcast. Please hit us up on our website. You can reach out to us, submit your topics, stories, thoughts, concerns at manfuse.com, and please share our podcast. We greatly appreciate you. Hey. Hey. Bye. <laughs>